right? Okay, our uh, next speaker is the uh, Professor Chan uh, from Hanyang University. So today he's going to tell us topological superconductivity and Majorana fermions in doped Dirac semi-metals. Professor Chan, please go ahead. Uh, Jiyun Kim, uh, before starting, uh, I have a question about the time. So when should I start my talk? Uh, you have uh, 40, 45 40, minutes. Uh, 45 minutes from now? Yes, okay, yeah, from so now. Yeah. Uh, 30, 40, 35, okay, I see. Okay. Okay, <clears throat> yep. Yeah, thank you for, uh, thank you for introducing me and my name, hello, uh, my name is Hang Mor Chun um, from Hanyang University. And first I would like to thank organizers for giving me a um, nice opportunity to have a talk in this nice conference. Uh, in this talk, I will discuss the topological superconductivity and myonal fermions in duroxane metal on the symmetry ruling at this lattice at this torsion. So I will discuss the myonal fermion um, in the duroxane metal, for example, uh, such as the material in the cardinal arsenide. And I will study, I will discuss the effect of the lattice distortion uh, in this talk. Okay, uh, before going on, I will give us some, uh, I'll, I'll give some um, acknowledgement for, for this work. And this work is based on this paper. And this paper is, uh, <clears throat> and these are my collaborators uh, for this work and Kiyun Kim in Seoul University and Pasokbom Jam at the University of Seoul, who is the, uh, one of the organizers of this conference and the Bom Jong Yang in the Seoul National University. And this is content. Uh, first, I will give a brief introduction for topology and topological object in physics for uh, students. And, and I will introduce the topological material such as the one material. And I'll, then I will discuss the uh, topological superconductor and myonal fermions. And then uh, I will discuss our uh, result on the topological conductivity in the duraxane metal. In the metal, this is introduction. So let me start by the topology. So topology is a very um, interesting concept nowadays in all areas of physics. So topology is a concept uh, which is uh, related with the continuous deformation. So if two objects are continuously deformed each other, they are in the same topological class and shares the same topological properties. And so, and their uh, top topological properties are characterized or can be calculated by the uh, topological invariants such as all number. Uh, and uh, let's discuss the uh, topological object in physics. Then and traditionally, there are so many uh, topological objects in one plus one dimension. There are bosonic and fermion solutions and jacquib levy solutions. And in two dimensions, there are superconducting vortexes and scormions, which are the uh, the main themes so on of this conference, and there are many interesting uh, monopoles and so on. In condensed matter physics nowadays, uh, there are many various interesting topological materials, which are integer quantum insulators, topological insulators, topological superconductors, Dirac semi metal, bi semi metal, and so on. So, in this talk, I will discuss the uh, interesting physics in topological superconductor and Dirac semi metal. Uh, usually in quantum system, the uh, topology is included in the quantum wave function psi. And because we are considering a periodic system uh, like a solid, then in such a solid with a periodic lattice, the topology is included in below wave function. And so the so below function because naturally, uh, because below wave function naturally gives the, the band. So this gives the so-called topological band theory. So in the viewpoint of topological band theory, uh, the, we can easily understand the, the topological properties of the uh, electronic bands. For example, the first band and second bands are, uh, can, be, uh, this can be different continuously, so they are in the same topological class. In this case, we call it that, uh, we, in this case, we call it that as a uh, normal insulator, but for, for second and third are band structures, 
they are they cannot be uh, deformed continuously. So in this case, the third one is called topological insulator. So for this this kind of material, so we can define a topological invariant using the blow wave functions. So topological invariant characterize the properties of the topological materials. Uh, many are also uh, speakers also already discussed their, their translators. So I will briefly introduce the translator as a um, topological uh, system. So the project uh, translator uh, insulator is characterized the so-called chun number, which is the uh, uh, the, and which is defined as the integral of very very uh, connection of the two dimensional Boolean chain, and so this model and uh, is characterized the chain number, which is so called the uh, uh, is which is the related so called the covering uh, of this from the Boolean zone to the blow sphere. So I will skip it for because many people speakers have uh, already discussed it. So. Uh, so the next question is, so what happens to topological materials? So what, why topological materials are important? We already know that there is, there is the bulk boundary principle. So if the bulk has a non trivial topology, then the, uh, at the boundary, there are uh, there is a uh, topological protect is uh, at this stage or surface states. For example, the, for the uh, two-dimensional uh, change later at the edge, there is a color at this stage. So this are uh, the important point is that this so two protocol at this stage are extremely stable. So it can transport quantum information or quantum state with, without any uh, dissipation. So uh, therefore uh, people are thinking that uh, two protocol materials are expected to drive new, new information or revolution such as pintronics and quantum, quantum uh, computation. So we are interested in uh, Duraxin metal. Why uh, Duraxin metal is into? Why is the Duraxin metal interesting? So far, there are uh, many, many um, topological materials uh, in uh, uh, studied and suggested. So, for example, the topological insulator is uh, have a, a gap in the bulk and a helical edge state on the boundary, and Duraxin metal and the bio semi metal has a, a Relativistic uh, uh, dispersions and gap list uh, structure. And also, it has an uh, interesting uh, surface state, such as forming a loop or forming an arc. And for higher topological insulators, it is uh, gapped, but it has an uh, interesting corner state on their boundaries. The interesting point is that, uh, uh, as discussed many, uh, by many speakers, that there, this kind of topological uh, can be described so-called Dirac equation, so even though it can be a massive or massless. Uh, so uh, from this uh, picture, we can think that the Dirac same era or Dirac equation can be very uh, useful platform uh, that generate to other um, materials. So I'm sorry. Uh, <clears throat> so Dirac same era can be a very useful tool uh, to study uh, many topological uh, materials. So from, uh, for example, from the topological Dirac semi metal, we can obtain the bio semi metal action insulator, topological insulator, and the topological uh, superconductor. The, it is suggested by this paper. And for example, uh, tuning the parameters, so we can obtain the Dirac uh, semi metal from the trivial insulator, and and if we uh, Control their parameter more and more, we can obtain the other uh, topological materials such as topological insulators. So, Dirac similar is very interesting uh, material for studying many topological materials. So, uh, let me briefly, briefly uh, introduce the importance of the Dirac material one more time in the viewpoint of the uh, uh, elementary level. So, the electron we know. This is the main player in the condensed matter physics. It's actually uh, one of the fundamental particles in physics. So it, it is actually a direct fermion in high energy physics. But it, it is uh, usually it is a classical particle having a dispersion like this, a, a parabolic dispersion like this. But if the momentum increases, uh, it should be have the, some kind of a relativistic, uh, it should be a relative particle having this kind of a, a linear dispersion. 
Uh, however, it's very difficult to find zero particle in real uh, condensed matter system because there are many um, electrons and the interactions are very complex. And also, the, uh, the fundamentally, usually the band crossing is fragile by the perturbation. So let's think about this, this kind of, of the uh, Dirac band or linear band. Then if we put our uh, perturbation, it, the band will be gapped out. So, so it is very hard to find uh, uh, this kind of uh, interesting multi, uh, multi material, interesting zero particle in real uh, system. However, uh, in the from the, the graphene is is discovered as a, a realization of the two D Dirac fermion. So uh, th then, and this kind this graphene shows many interesting uh, relativistic relativistic uh, properties uh, such as Klein turning and so on. So nowadays we can uh, discuss and study the data electrons in the condensed matter system. The important and interesting point is that symmetry. Actually, this point is, uh, uh, is this Dirac point is protected by the symmetry in the absence of the spin of coupling uh, by the uh, time reversal and inversion symmetry. So I will not discuss the detail, but the time reversal and, and inversion symmetry uh, does not allow this kind of uh, a perturbation. So this uh, band crossing or Dirac point can be protected by the symmetry. Let's think about the three-dimensional Dirac semi-metal uh, and semi-metal. Uh, this is the main topic of this talk. Actually, uh, in the previous uh, speak, uh, speaker talk, uh, uh, speaker we already uh, discussed the three-dimensional, uh, uh, discussed very, uh, gave a very interesting uh, introduction to the, the about the Dirac equation, but. Uh, I will briefly discuss it. And uh, for the three-dimensional Dirac metal, uh, the Hamiltonian can be uh, described should be described for four by four matrix. And this is a linear uh, dispersion relation for four band theory. So this is the uh, Dirac point which is uh, four fold degeneracy has has four fold degeneracy. But uh, in this case, time reversal and inversion symmetry is not enough. For, for example, let's think about the time reversal symmetry. Time reversal symmetry flips the uh, momentum and spin. So this bands become like this band. And also uh, the inversion symmetry flips only the momentum. So this and this band becomes like this. And this is the uh, doubly degenerated band. So simply speaking, the PT or uh, time reversal and inversion symmetry gives doubly degenerated band structures. However, PT, a TP is not enough to protect this, this Dirac point because if we give, if there is an additional uh, perturbation, the bands are kept out. So to realize there are the three dimensional of the semi metal is suggested that the symmetry is very important. And then the symmetry protected topological Dirac semi metal was realized and suggested in the uh, many system. In this case, the crystal symmetry is very important and protects the Dirac point. So, for example, the fourfold rotational, let's think about the fourfold rotational symmetry. Then, this fourfold rotational symmetry can assign their different four, different four different eigenvalues lambda one to three four at this point. Then, the Dirac point can be uh, remain to be uh, stable. So, this study is is one of my, my authors courses already are discussed in this in this paper. So uh, I wanted to emphasize that the uh, crystal symmetry becomes very important in the whole in the in, in my in, in my talk. And there are many are uh, known uh, Dirac semi metals. So these are the known Dirac semi metals. And among one of our uh, famous uh, material is cadmium arsenide, which has a, a band structure, three-dimensional band structure like this. And this is experimental data. And this is DF calculation. This is RFS data. And so from this uh, paper and from many works, then this material is realized as a, a three-dimensional uh, Dirac C metal experimentally. And, and I will focus on this material, cadmium arsenide in this talk. So let's discuss the uh, topological superconductor and minor fermions, and uh, and I will briefly introduce this, this concept. So topological 
uh, before discussing the protocol superconductor, I will discuss a uh, uh, superconductor, which is a, a very interesting material uh, that shows uh, zero resistance below a TC, and it has uh, actually a particle at particle symmetry, which is even though it is it is redundant, redundant and the topological superconductor is a, a superconductor that has a, a non-zero, non-trivial, I'm sorry, non-trivial non topology. So uh, due to the bulk bounded principle and particle symmetry, uh, there is an FG or surface state on the boundary of the uh, material, which can which is a, a, is known to a ion of fermion. Myonophomion, and uh, I will introduce myonophomion. So myonophomion is, is a, a fermion uh, described by the this, this kind of zero equation. And actually by the definition, the myonophomion is a fermion that uh, that is, a, is, is its own antiparticle. So it is suggested in, uh, originally in the element as an elementary particle, but now uh, the myonophomion can be realized in uh, superconductors. So for example, um, in 2008, uh, Fu and Kane suggested that the amount of bound states can, um, can exist at, at the interface between topological insulator and superconductors. And, and actually are these kinds of the bionophomions are known to satisfy the non-anomalous, non-abelian R statics. And so it is known that it can be used to as a uh, basic of uh, platform for their uh, topological, compu com com topological computation. So after uh, this kind of many studies, there has been many studies on topological superconductor using the topological material. So this is the one possible uh, uh, method to finding our uh, topological superconductor. So the, the, the suggested method is that uh, use the unknown uh, topological materials and with materials such as quantum or and quantum spin or uh, insulators. For example, this is a quantum or uh, insulator and they are edge states at under boundary. If we uh, apply our superconductivity or if we are assign our superconductivity in this material, you can get our myonophomion on the uh, boundary like this and this uh, become a kind of superconductor. Similarly, the, for the quantum or spin or insulator can uh, be a uh, uh, a helical superconductor after a superconducting pairing. So we expect that uh, this kind of the myonophomion will read a new information or uh, uh, revolution such as quantum information and quantum computation. Okay, so the next question is what is the possible uh, topological superconductivity? If we, if we use the Dirac semi metal, uh, then what is the possible uh, superconductivity? That is a uh, question. So uh, as I discussed before, our many our Dirac semi metals are reported in in, in in various materials are reported as our Dirac semi metal. So among them, the cadmium arsenide and Au2BB are known to are to show the superconductivity. So for cadmium arsenide, are uh, this is the temperature dependent resistance, uh, near uh, higher than 8.5 gigapascal. Uh, issues the superconductivity and the te critical temperatures uh, is approximately two Kelvin, and and the point is that the under our uh, pressure, there's there's a crystal uh, structural phase transition from the uh, tetragonal to monoclinic, and also uh, for A to BB, this is the temperature dependent resistivity and and at zero R uh, magnetic field. This is the uh, data for zero magnetic field. Then issues of superconductivity are near the 1.2 Kelvin. And so, uh, and interestingly, our, this system at room temperature, it, 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 the system is uh, tetragonal and shows the Dirac uh, same metal, but at room temperature, uh, it is elongated on one direction and become also rhombic, and, and then it shows the superconductivity. For a cadmium arsenide are at the uh, uh, at the ambient pressure, uh, it shows uh, a, a Dirac semi metal uh, and it shows a, a tetragonal system. But under a uh, pressure, 
there is a structural phase transition from the uh, tetragonal to monoclinic. So, uh, so we wanted to uh, study the relative, relative distortion effect and on this uh, superconduction uh, on these two materials. So the interesting point is that uh, these two are material shares the tetragonal system and time reversal and inversion symmetry. So our model system uh, is 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 this. So based on the uh, tetragonal system and time reversal symmetry, uh, we have constructed our general uh, minimal Hamiltonian describing a three-dimensional Dirac same error at uh, before the uh, lattice distortion. And distortion and this is the Hamiltonian and it is composed of the five gamma matrices, even though I now wanted to explain the express form. And it has a, 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 a five gamma matrices. And then <clears throat> these gamma matrices are satisfied the transform, transformation properties like this, uh, because we are, we, uh, because we constructed this Hamiltonian uh, we using the symmetry like this. The first one is time reversal and, and inversion and D4H uh, point group symmetry from the tetragonal system. The important point is that this is a four by four uh, Hamiltonian. So, and, and so it has a uh, uh, orbital as, as well as spin. So spin and orbital coupling, there is a spin and orbital coupling, strong spin orbital coupling. So we should consider spin and uh, both spin and uh, orbital to discuss the physics in this material. So next question is what is the possible uh, superconducting pairing in this system or in this uh, drug same metal? So uh, in summary, uh, shortly speaking, the superconducting pairing is rather complex. So this is the three-dimensional band structure, and this is the band structures along KG direction. This is a Fermi rebel because this material is, is doped. Then it has a Fermi surface like this, and we should consider the pairing or superconducting pairing on this uh, Fermi surface. But uh, because of the spin of the coupling, as I mentioned before, we should consider spin and orbital. So uh, briefly, we call it the spin up and down, and for orbital, we call it uh, one and and second, one and two for orbital to name them. And moreover, the, there actually are there are two uh, Fermi surface in this uh, material. So uh, we should consider the more uh, complex uh, superconducting pairing. And, and also we should consider the all possible uh, couple pairing uh, considering the uh, spin and orbital. Moreover, uh, we, we should consider uh, the possible interaction between uh, electrons. Actually, there's no known interaction uh, mechanism between our electrons in this material. So we simply assume that the inter, inter orbital uh, interaction and, and interorbital interaction. So for inter orbital in, interaction, there's no orbital mixing, but for inter orbital interaction, there there are uh, orbital mixing. So the one of the interesting points uh, what I wanted to tell is that the, the interorbital interaction is very important. If and when if this V, if the interorbital interaction is very large, then the project per conductivity emerges as I show later. So please remember the this concept, these things, interorbital interaction. Okay, so I will discuss the uh, the two project for conducty uh, before the uh, in the uh, in the uh, absence of the lattice distortion before discussing the effect of lattice distortion. So let's consider the two project for conductivity in the absence of uh, lattice distortion. So we should consider the uh, possible uh, superconducting pairing see, in this uh, system. So we assume that uh, the total linear momentum is zero. And in the absence of lattice distortion, uh, we classified the uh, Cooper pairing according to the uh, reducible, irreducible representation of D4H point group. 
which is the mother group of the uh, uh, Dirac Semera uh, in the absence of the elastic distortion. So this is a, a, a result. So we theoretically uh, classified all possible momentum independent pairing potentials. So there are six pair. Uh, there are six possible pairings. Uh, two are uh, even. Uh, uh, two pairings are even parity even. So it can give the even parity superconductor, and four pairings can give uh, odd parity superconductors, and two pairings are included in the A1G group, A1G class, and two uh, are in the B class. And interestingly, the delta 41 and 42 are included in the two-dimensional class EU. Interestingly, are there the a spin singlet and spin triplet superconductors. And the interesting point is that the, the first two are pairings are uh, actually two types make, actually make a couple pair between same orbital. So one, one, two, two, one, one, two, two, or, and others are uh, pair, for other pairings are, the, the couple pairs are, are formed between different orbitals, one, two, one, two, like this. Uh, if we, once we get uh, that get the six uh, possible superconducting pairings, uh, we study the possible uh, superconducting gap uh, structures. Uh, so there are six pairings here, and they show interesting uh, phases. For example, for delta one, uh, it shows a uh, full gap, uh, full gap uh, gap structure like this. So it shows a fully gapped superconductor. And for delta one prime, uh, it has a, a, a nodal ring in the uh, Boolean zone, so it shows a nodal superconductivity. And interestingly, for delta two and delta three, it shows nodal point in the uh, g axis. And this this nodal points are protected by the this this orange plane. Actually, the orange plane is middle plane, so. Middle plane uh, or middle symmetry protects these nodal, nodal points. And these are uh, the accident point. And so there are many interesting uh, phases. But this is a summary for uh, superconducting phases in the uh, absence of uh, lattice distortion. So, in the absence of lattice distortion, uh, we have calculated our the phase diagram. So, uh, with respect to uh, two in, inter interesting dense density uh, interactions, U and V. The interesting point is this: is this uh, if V, the inter-orbital coupling, inter-orbital interaction is large, and then the protocol phase can emerge. So uh, for these phases, we can get a, a nodal superconductor or protocol superconductor. Or for so this phase is the uh, important result of this work, and and. The fully gapped phase and topological loader superconductor fa conducting phases can be uh, distinguished by their uh, surface spectrum. And so for fully gapped phase, there's no uh, in gap state. Uh, however, for topological phases and uh, topological nodal phases, there exists the flat myonophomion. So this flat myonophomion can be uh, measured uh, by the surface sensitive state. Uh, it, it is reported in this paper. So is that all? So we, we wanted to consider the SMET uh, lattice distortion effect, effect. So as discussed before, uh, there are many uh, Dirac Semel same methods. And from this, uh, this the cadmium arsenide and A2PB, uh, the gold lead uh, shows our uh, topological superconductivity under uh, lattice distortion. So we have studied the uh, uh, effect of lattice distortion in this system and in this system. So interestingly, this uh, the border system shares the D4H uh, point group. However, but uh, after the uh, the the lattice distortion, uh, the crystal uh, this can become monoclinic or uh, orthorhombic. However, the time reversal and uh, the inversion symmetry still remains even under the uh, lattice distortion. So. And also, there's a more experimental data. It shows that for cadmium arsenide, uh, the zero bias conductance peak is observed in the uh, experimental setup. So, 
So they are uh, expecting that this can be a uh, uh, myonophomion. So, so, so based on these two uh, materials, uh, we have constructed uh, the, a model to study the, uh, the effect of the lattice distortion. So uh, this is the Hamiltonian, uh, model Hamiltonian for Dirac same metal. So, and then if we, if, and then, uh, when using the group theory and the perturbative approaches and time reversal and inversion metry using this constraint, we have constructed a perturbative Hamiltonian for describing the symmetry rolling lattice distortions. So we classified all possible uh, symmetry rolling uh, uh, lattice distortions. And actually we found uh, four types of them. These are four types of them. We call it simply N1, N2, N3, and N4 type. Uh, <clears throat> this is our explicit uh, form. Uh, they are represented by the gamma matrix. It's, this is the uh, remaining uh, subgroup of uh, under the lattice distortion. So, and the situation. So, important point is uh, N1 and N2 types are, can explain the AU to BB, which is AU to PB, because this uh, this uh, this perturbation gives our orthoromic our uh, crystal system and also uh, N three and N four it can explain cadmium arsenide because it gives a uh, both nucleic uh, crystal system. So these these four types of symmetry loading light situations are uh, interestingly are uh, consistent with the reported uh, experimental data. So what is the effect of lattice distortion? As I as discussed before, uh, it's very natural to understand this slide. From the tetragonal type of the um, water, crystal, water uh, crystal system, if we apply the uh, N1 or N2 type the lattice distortion, then the, uh, the system is elongated along one axis, then it can it gives our orthorhombic uh, crystal system. And also for N3 and N4 systems, are uh, one plane is inclined that gives that gives a monoclonic system. So, so this is consistent with the experiment. And also the Dirac bands are kept out under the lattice distortion. This is the band three-dimensional band structure. And for what happened to our superconducting pairings? So because uh, there are because uh, the mother uh, system has a tetragonal symmetry and D4H point group. However, after the lattice distortion, the system becomes orthorhombic and monoclonic. So D4H is the no longer the uh, a point group of the system and we should consider the subgroups uh, of the D4H. So we classify, we make a classification uh, using this new symmetry group of the under the uh, lattice uh, distortion. Then we have studied all possible uh, superconducting phases. Uh, the interesting point is that the, the topological phase transition can be occurs, can, can occur uh, under the lattice uh, distortion. So for, in this case, the uh, essential physics is the crystal symmetry. So crystal symmetry is very important as I mentioned before. So actually uh, in this case, mirror symmetry is very important. So, so the point is to whether the mirror symmetry is broken or not. So for mother or Dirac same era, it has a tetragonal and for our superconducting state, uh, for example, we, let's consider delta two phases. And in this case, there is a, there, it is a, a nodal superconductor and the surface spectrum is like this. So for, between nodal, there is a flat band myonophomia. If there are, uh, Let's consider the effect of the lattice distortion. If the uh, lattice distortion occurs from tetragonal to orthorhombic, then the diagonal mirror, diagonal mirror is actually the protected, protect, uh, protect this, this nodal point. However, under the lattice distortion, diagonal mirror is broken. So it, the, the, the superconductor is fully gapped, fully gapped, and so the flat band become uh, dispersive. So so uh, there is a topological phase transition on the, the lattice distortion. So 
So we have studied uh, for, this is a, a possible superconducting phases for uh, cadmium arsenide. There are uh, six uh, possible superconducting pairings and you can find our full gap superconductor, nodal, nodal superconductor with nodal links or nodal superconductor with nodal points. Interesting point is that there, these delta two, three, and four, one, four, two phases has a myelin state on the boundary. However, uh, these delta one and delta one phases do not have any uh, uh, myelin state. So we expect that these four states should be uh, are observed in the experiment. So, and if, and we expect that these four states can explain the zero bias conductor spin in the experiment. So the second are uh, the important effect of the red distortion is the enhancement of our uh, critical temperature TC. The red distortion increases the density of state at Fermi surface like this. So the density of state are uh, increases, so TC increases. So this is the, our uh, theoretical calculation using the renalized gap equation. In this case, the, the, as the that distortion increases, the critical temperature increases. I th we think that this, this explains the experimental data here. So as pressure increases, the critical temperature increases. And especially we wanted to emphasize that the delta two and delta three phase, which is a, a, can be a topological phase having a myelin fermion can emerge even uh, under the red distortion. As I discussed before, delta one has no myelin fermion. So at low, at low lattice pressure or at low uh, lattice distortion, uh, myelin fermion cannot be observed. But however, uh, at, uh, there's a crossover here. And so uh, enough for enough uh, lattice distortion, the uh, myelin fermion can be observed. This is our uh, result. So to understand the uh, mechanism for enhancement of this delta two and delta phase were to, to to understand the emergence of the uh, topological phase, uh, we uh, calculated the expectation value of the pairing before and after that distortion for uh, delta one and delta two phases. So this is the expectation value of uh, uh, delta one and delta two phases pairing, delta one and delta two uh, superpotential pairings at the Fermi surface. Is this is Fermi surface? And before the red distortion, this is the red and the red yellow here. And after the lattice distortion uh, the, 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 for delta one, the expectation values are same, but the, the, for delta two phases, the, the yellow one become a red one. So red one is uh, higher than the yellow one. So the uh, superconducting pairing, uh, we can see that the superconducting pairing is enhanced for these topological uh, phases. So we actually calculated the difference before and after the lattice distortion. So for uh, delta one, there's no differences because it all data shows a yellow color. Zero, zero means yellow. Zero means yellow. Uh, sorry, yellow means zero. And however, for delta two phases, uh, there is an increase increasement like, like this under the lattice distortion. So to understand more, uh, we we have we have studied the uh, the uh, the orbital texture in this. So, 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 uh, micros, uh, first, let's consider phase uh, diagram one more time. To, so, this is a phase diagram. So, this is a, a, a temperature, a critical temperature uh, along this black arrow. When U3 is very large, then uh, with respect to N3, X axis is so N3 is the lattice distortion. To, and, as the lattice distortion increases, the, the critical temperature increases, and also the unconventional or topological phase delta two and delta three uh, overcome the delta one. So, so the when interorbital interaction V and inter lattice, uh, I'm sorry, interorbital interaction V and lattice distortions are very large enough. Uh, the topological phases such as delta two and delta three can emerge. This is the result. So why, what, why this kind, uh, what is the mechanism of this? So to understand this, uh, 
we plotted uh, the orbital uh, texture of wave function at the Fermi surface. This is this uh, this blue circle indicates to uh, Fermi surface, and the orbital the wave functions can be decomposed to our orbital path part and spin part in this system. So we uh, draw the uh, the orbital texture in the Boolean zone along x y z directions. So for before the uh, for the tetragonal system and, and I mean the before the uh, uh, I mean the in the absence of the uh, lattice distortion, the directions of the two orbitals here and here are the same and they are parallel. So there is no orbital mixing between them. So each so. Uh, each, each, uh, okay, I, I mean, I mean, there's no orbital mixing between them. But uh, after the lattice distortion, for let's consider, so for example, as orthorhombic uh, crystal system, then the orbital textures are tilted. So the directions of two orbitals are tilted along x direction. So uh, it means that orbital mixing between different orbitals is allowed. So delta two and delta three are phase, superconducting phases. Uh, are actually uh, are related with orbital mixing. So this kind of their superconducting uh, phases can be in, in, can be enhanced uh, microscopically. So the, the, so the, the topological unconventional topological superconduct can emerge under less distortion. Uh, so I will briefly discuss the topological problem. Yeah, yeah, Professor Chan, uh, actually yeah. you have a, a five minutes left, almost four minutes left, so uh, you I'm may, sorry, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. I have only two or three slides, okay. Yeah, I will skip the, the topological properties, uh, but uh, different minor fermions can be uh, protected by the different topological number is very uh, well known. So uh, for uh, cadmium arsenide, there are uh, many interesting uh, topological uh, structures, for example, the nodal ring or nodal point. And, these are actually protected by the chiral winding number like this to do and uh, and also the point is is protected by the middle chiral winding number in this middle plane and they are classified g2 we have shown we have shown that uh, these numbers are classified as g2 uh, thank you this is summary so we classified the all possible lattice distortion for uh, generating a model of of Dirac metal and we classified the all possible superconducting phases for superconducting um, phases for Dirac metal and nodal structures uh, we show that nodal structures are protected by the topological winding numbers and and as this as this as an effect of lattice distortion, the, as the uh, lattice distortion increases, the superconducting critical temperature increases because of the enhancement of density of state at Fermi surface, which is consistent, consistent with the uh, recent experiment. And topological conductivity can emerge when the lattice distortion is large enough because of the spin of the texture allows conventional pairing when the spin of the coupling exists in this system. Thank you for uh, your listening. Okay, thank you. Now, uh, question and uh, comment from audience. Yep. So, uh, so yep. Uh, yeah, so uh, thanks for the nice talk, Pro Professor Chan. So isn't, isn't there, so we have two farming surfaces, so isn't there usually have, we have a, Pair density wave instability. <laughs> ah. Ah. Because uh -huh. yeah, yeah. electron pair natural question, within the firm yeah. Yeah, I see, I see. But there, there is a our natural question, but actually we did not <laughs> calculate them because and because uh, even even though we do not are uh, considered such uh, uh FF arrow state and pair density wave state, mm. we can explain the the experiment using only the yeah, momentum independent are pairing. So that's the reason why. <laughs> Actually, this is work is very hard. <laughs> yeah. Because, yeah, I yeah. see. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. And also, also another question is you, you found that this delta two and delta three has the same critical temperature, probably they fall into the same irreducible representation. No, no, no. That is very excellent question. So uh, actually, delta two and delta two shows are uh, in the uh, here. 
uh, actually they are a different they are included in different uh, representation Already. according depending on their uh crystal so can you see this one yeah, yeah, yeah. so so it is natural uh to guess that the critical temperature should be different for delta mm. two and delta three but in that calculation we only assume that n3 type of the uh, minimal uh, lattice distortion i see in this case they are uh, the temperatures uh, critical temperature degenerated, but I think they, if we put more uh, distortion, we can uh, distinguish them. So actually, in my paper, we have calculated that. <laughs> okay, I see. That result. Okay, thank you. Okay, thanks for the clarification. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, one more question from audience. Actually, I have a question. So, uh, Seems like you have a semi metal which has a direct, uh, direct, yeah, direct dispersion. Then, as long as you have a lattice distortion, that induces superconductivity, which means when you apply the pressures in any uh, direct semi metals, you always get, uh, get the superconductivity. Is that true? Not true. <laughs> huh? So, some, uh, I think uh, we found a class of uh, Dirac semi-metal that shows superconductivity under pressure uh, because uh, we started our uh, generic uh, minimum model, which explains the cadmium arsenide and AU2PB, which, show, which shares the uh, te tetragonal system as a model system. Tetragonal as a model system. In this case, the Dirac points are protected by the Fourfold rotation symmetry along G direction. And in this case, there are two uh, along G axis. In this case, we can say that if we pressure, our, if we apply pressure, then super critical temperature will increase. So, so this argument uh, can be applied for heterogonal system. Okay. Or, or, or. Then. Then uh, you said uh, as you increase the uh, uh, pressure, then you have a uh, more chance to have a uh, intermixing overlap uh, pairing uh, probabilities. Right, which right. means uh, as you increase the uh, pressure, then you your tissue will be uh, increased as well. That's your yeah. argument, right? Yes, but yes. Uh, in in data. It, in cadmium arsenide, uh, probably uh, when you apply the uh, uh, pressure up to 50 gigapascal, something like that, right. but the, but the uh, TC is uh, almost uh, flat, uh, starting from 4 gigapascal to uh, 50 gigapascal. Yes, so yes. can so, you explain so, that? Thank you for the uh, question. Um, so yeah, in, in this case, yeah. yeah because we are considering uh, my, my approach is a perturbative approach based on the symmetry. So we cannot explain uh, <laughs> the situation where the pressure is very high. We, we think that uh, in, as far as I know, the, when the pressure is very high, there should be some uh, distortions in the system. So our model cannot be applied as far as I know. So, okay. <laughs> Okay, yeah, uh, thank you. Thank you for the uh, answers and thank you for the talk. And uh, let me conclude uh, this session. Let's thank the speaker again. And